This episode of Indie Mogul is brought to you by Squarespace. A lot of times on these music videos, you're hitting hour 14, hour 16, hour 18. We're gonna do the next hip hop country music video. It's on. Good morning, welcome to Indie Mogul. I'm your host, Ted, and today we're gonna be talking about the big MV, music videos. Before we get into this, I wanna make one thing extremely clear. It's a hard knock life. I think music videos are probably the hardest thing to be doing as a filmmaker today. And I know a lot of you guys out there are looking at commercials or narrative features, but in terms of peak difficulty, music videos are it. You've got the lowest budgets, the fastest sets, the most demanding clients, the most eyeballs. More people are gonna watch your music video than your feature. I hate to say it, it's probably true. Now, in the old days, it used to be different. Music videos used to get multi-million dollar budgets, they used to get multi-day shoots. These days, record labels aren't getting paid to make music videos, but the content still has to be good. In fact, the expectations are higher than ever. So, how do you make a music video look good fast? Well, to find out, let's go on a little field trip. Alrighty guys, so we are here today at Popsicle Studios LA. This is Justin Jones' set. I'm ready to check it out. <laughs> this is Justin. Not only is the guy a complete animal behind the camera, but he's also the head of production at a place called Create Music, who manages Marshmello, the Migos, Porter Robinson, literally everybody. What do I do with my hand? Uh, you do scissor motions. Now, these days, Justin is shooting with big budgets and huge crews, but when I first met him, I remember Justin texting me about how artists would text him hours before a shoot and expect him not only to produce and shoot the video, but also make it look good. When I was like 23, I met a guy named George Orozco. Shout out to George. He directs a lot of music videos for Hobson, for Fora, for Dizzy Wright, a ton of cool, big artists. And so he wanted to direct, and so I took the, the shooting route, the cinematography route. And so through that, man, there's, there's times when <clears throat> I'm doing homework. It was like a 24-hour lab, uh, so it's like 8 o'clock after class. He hits me up. He says, yo, at midnight at this soundstage, we're going to shoot a music video for Jaron Benton and Dizzy Wright. This is what it's about. Make a list of gear real quick to go to the cage from the school. So get the gear, hit the soundstage, shoot it, be back at class at 7.30 in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> you said one day and often you don't get a prep day. Yeah. Is that normal for music videos? You get one day to shoot the whole thing? Yes. That is insane. Justin is saying that even the biggest artists only shoot their music videos in one day. That's eight to nine setups, fog machine, dancers, LED bikes, a choreographed one shot, a steady cam op, 18 foot jib, sky panels for one day of shooting. Now, if you're anything like me, when you heard that, you probably thought, are you crazy? When you don't have much time, when someone calls you 24 hours before a shoot, um, do you have any go-tos in terms of making something look good quick? I'd probably have like three go-tos, right? So definitely soft lighting all the way around, right? So overhead soft lighting. Soft overhead lighting. Soft overhead light is key. What Justin is talking about here is he's talking about soft overhead lighting. Keyword soft. Soft means that that light is going to wrap around the eyes a little bit. It's going to fill in those raccoon eyes and it's actually gonna make a pretty dramatic image. It's actually the same look that you see in a lot of movies like The Matrix or Atomic Blonde in those big epic fight scenes. It's basically the go-to epic dramatic look. You fill a wide space with soft overhead lighting and it's super practical because you can make that soft overhead light as big as you want. Now, now in Popsicle, Justin has this effect actually built into the location, which is actually super dope because this entire LED wall can actually change colors, it can dim, it can flash, which actually brings us to our next point. Then I would say uh, a soft key light. Gotcha. Yeah. So with that key light, basically, that first key light that you're talking about, that's extending the effect of the overhead light. Correct. Now the key light is going to bring in a little bit of light into your shadows. It's gonna fill in those raccoon eyes and also give you an eye light. Now, you're probably thinking, what is your last light? And then a hard or soft backlight to cross key with that key. Now this here is a cross light. Basically it's gonna be placed at the opposite angle of the key light and it's going to not only fill in the shadows but also act as a backlight by lighting the back of your character and separating them from that background. 
Now, there's still one more piece that we're missing here. When I think of Justin Jones cinematography in my head, what I think of is I think of these, these extremely bright colors and these color palettes. Uh, how do you pick those color palettes? So when picking a color, you obviously find out like what the talent's branding is and then pick a color that is basically opposite of the color wheel to that to complement it. Complementary colors, you remember those? You learned them in first grade. If you don't remember, ask a first grader. You will remember one color makes the other color brighter. The two colors together will make the most visually stunning image possible. You see this in Hollywood movies a lot. You got your teal and orange, you got your yellow and purple. And on this set, Justin used red and cyan. Now when we flipped the set and inverted them, he used cyan and red. Now basically by flipping them, we're keeping both colors poppy and keeping them in the same color palette to make two different looks in one color palette. So now that we got our complementary colors, what is next? Can we finally hit that record button on our camera? Right, so after I light the set, then I start bringing in elements like dancers or a car, haze or smoke, lens effects which will give you blurred parts of the image or lens flares, uh, people riding a motorcycle through or bikes with like colored LEDs in the spokes. Now, don't freak out because I know what that sounds like. I thought it too. But Ted, that's like everything else that's in the music video. That's like everything that makes it cool. I mean. All this really boils down to is two things. One, visual interest, and two, depth. Now, visual interest refers to anything in frame that's gonna make your image pop. It's gonna hold your attention a little bit longer. Now, in the case of Justin's set, this is going to be the choreographed dancers. This is gonna be the lights in the background. This is gonna be the flashing effects. This is gonna be the LED bikes and trikes. And in terms of depth, it's gonna be the way that he stages all of these elements. As you can see, he stages the dancers in different lines. He stages the lighting background in different focus planes. Remember, different layers, multiple layers, is what creates depth. In addition to staging his visual interest in different planes of focus, he also had this guy. This is Thor. He is an absolute beast and he does all kinds of crazy motions in camera. Now, to boil it down for you guys, he's gonna do three things. One, he's going to push in and push out. That's gonna show the spatial difference between your talent and create more depth. Two, he's gonna parallax. Parallaxing is going to change our talent from the background and show even more depth. And third, he's gonna corkscrew, he's gonna do all kinds of tilt and pans. This is gonna make more visual interest in the frame. It's gonna hold that attention of your viewer a little bit longer. And the day that he does all three of these, he's going to save the multiverse and make an amazing looking shot. Now, before we move on, there is one more thing. One of the things that I noticed when we were on set is that you always back up your lights pretty far, actually. And that's, that's different than I think a lot of narrative shoots that I see where we're always bringing in our lights just outside of frame, just outside behind the camera. Sure. Um, why do you light spaces so wide? Your widest shot, you're gonna see the most of your world, right? So being able to light it and make that shot look good, when you push in for closer shots, you don't have to make as many adjustments, right? So that can also make your day a lot faster when you don't have people moving lights, you don't have to reset up. And here we go again. Guys, music videos are hard and that's because you don't have much time. So don't forget, light wide. Guys, it saves you time, more time on set means more shots. Thanks, man. Thanks for having us on set. For sure. Word beast. For sure. Now, this is obviously a big set. There's probably about 50 people here with a full team of dancers. There's an 18-foot jib and sky panels. But how do we take some of the things that we learned here on set and take it to a smaller, cheaper, even faster routine? Well, to figure some of these out, we went to Justin's office to sit down and go through some of those techniques. Alrighty, guys. So now we're on set. We're going to try to recreate some of that big budget popsicle lighting here with a small budget and a skeleton crew. So what's tip number one? Well, tip number one, we're gonna try to recreate that soft overhead lighting. So right here, we've got some soft overhead lighting. Create a dramatic look, which you can start to see on my face, that still fills in those shadows, so I still look pretty good. Now moving on to our key, which is I know replicating a little bit of the look from the overhead. What's the key to getting this right? How do you place that light? So placing that light, you wanna put it basically at a 45 degree angle. If you put it too far frontal, it'll be really flat and not give you any kind of dimension of the face. If you put it too far sidey, you're really gonna get like a dark spot in the front of the face. Uh, so you wanna keep it about 45 degrees uh, to kind of really add that sparkle to the eye, add an eye light, and then also to continue that overhead light and really just fill in the face. Our next light is the fill light. Now this right here is a cyan light with a little bit of diffusion on it. It's a panel light. And just like we talked about before with complementary colors, this is cyan because the key light is red. Both colors are gonna make the other color pop a little bit more for the most stunning, bright possible frame. 
And for our last and final touch, we got to add a little bit of visual interest in the frame. So what we're setting up right now is single Kino tubes. It's a little bit old school. If you have quasars or a pixel tubes or anything like that, you can put that in the background. Now what this is going to do is it's going to pop your eye a little bit to the back of the frame. It's going to separate the background from the foreground. It's not going to affect the lighting on your actual talent but it will be something that adds a little bit of interest in the background. I might, I might also mention that the Kino tubes look a little bit hot in the back of the frame. Again, older technology, I probably would dim them down if I was using LEDs, or if I had a little more time, I'd probably put some ND around them. But we shot this entire setup in about 15 minutes. Which, for 15 minutes, that's pretty good for 15 minutes. Now, fortunately for you, I actually have one more tip to make this even better. And that tip is, don't do this. Don't do any of this. You think I'm, I don't do any of this. Don't do this lighting setup at all. Don't do this. If you watched this entire video and you learned a lot, don't do any of it. Do you feel like music videos are starting to look the same? I do. Cameras are getting so you know inexpensive nowadays that someone can pick up a camera. They use no lighting. They use all these crazy, weird, low quality after effects techniques to make it look better because of that. And I feel like that's a big old category on its own, right? Like all these new mumble rap videos, right? That are shot by their tour videographer. Like I think Lyrical Lemonade, right? Started this trend. And now since cameras and everything are so cheap is like everyone's just doing these cheap effects. These videos are getting billions of views because the artists that they're shooting them for blow up, right? So now that's the norm for everybody. And I feel like that's why a lot of those are looking the same. And so I think one of the reasons why all these like actual concept videos and videos where people actually build a story and like all those uh, is because they stand out, right? I think frankly we can all say that, right? We can probably all say that the, our favorite videos are the ones that are different, that don't just look good, that are exactly. even more beyond that, right? Yep. There you have it. There's your episode with Justin Jones, my friend and a super talented cinematographer. If you want to listen to the full discussion that we have about filmmaking and music videos, you can listen to it in the podcast in the link down below. If you like this episode, make sure you like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Find us on Instagram, find us on Facebook, wherever you are in this interworld. I'm Ted, this is Indie Mogul, and we'll catch you guys next time. You know I used to dance on a Russian dance team? Did you really? I did. It was the highest I've ever been paid in my life. Really? <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> no way. The reason why it's called uh, C-47 is no. because they went through 46 different models of this. Is that the story that you heard? Yeah. That's the story that you heard Before, about c No, I'm just f***ing that up. <laughs> This episode of Andy Mogul is brought to you by Squarespace. Whether you need a domain, a website, or an online store, make it with Squarespace. Get a website. Everyone has one. We have one. You can see it right here. Justin has one. You can see it right there. And guess what? Both of them were made on Squarespace. It is easy, it's not annoying. They've got 24 seven service. You can even embed your online work onto your Squarespace to instantly make it just that much better of a viewing experience. And when you are ready, head on over to squarespace.com for a free trial and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash indie mogul to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain.